All right, so welcome back um, to the MP. And in this uh, video, we're going to talk about, continue our discussion about debugging. Um, because here's the thing, in your career as a software creator, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. And, you know, what I would argue, what separates people who are good at getting things done and creating things and, you know, realizing their visions for a piece of code and accomplishing their goals and those who don't is not an inability to make mistakes because this stuff is complicated and everybody makes mistakes. What sets people apart is their ability to fix mistakes quickly and smoothly and just move on with life because... We are all imperfect human beings. We err to err as human, um, but to fix errors is wonderful. I don't know where to go with that. I started that statement and didn't really come out quite the way I wanted, but that's okay. Um, so we talked a little bit before about some strategies for debugging in terms of cleaning up your code, instrumenting it by adding uh, some, some error messages and trying to understand the problem. What I wanna show you this time is how to read what's called a stack trace, because this is a tremendously useful piece of information that is provided along with many errors that can help you understand what is going on. All right, so as I did previously, I'm starting with uh, the, the starter code and, I, and I've broken something, right? So I've broken something about, about my code base and we're gonna fix it together. Um, and you'll see when I try to run the test suites, like everything's broken, okay? Everything's broken, including the test suites that I expected to work. Um, everything is failing, like something is wrong. I've, I've made some massive um, mistakes, some massive boo-boo, um, and you know, uh, and so I, I want to try to figure out what's going on. Um, all right, so let's look a little bit at at, at, the, at one of these errors, um, and you'll see that there is a null pointer exception. So what this is here, this is something called a stack trace. So you can think of a stack trace as a a summary of how your program got to this point. So when we ran your program, at some point, some method called some other method that's called some other method that called some other method. And you can see actually uh, down here, uh, these methods are in this framework called RoboElectric, which is the testing framework that we use to test your code. So actually that's where the, the, the error came from. And then it called some other method, called some other method, called some other method. Sorry, that's not where the error came from. That's how we got here, right? When we ran the test, uh, we're using this testing framework and so it started off and at some point you start to see methods that are part of our program so all these methods down here you'll see in android studio these are gray i can still click on these and it, it may be able to take me to that line depending on what has the sources for that library available but once you see these blue links these are in our own code um, and, and actually then at the top, you see some gray links because this actually goes into a library, right? Uh, so I should go ahead and click on this right here in, in objects.java. Um, and I don't know, why not? Let's try it. Uh, okay. Um, and you'll see that the, um, the eventual error that's being generated is actually right here um, in this piece of code. I think the line number is just slightly off uh, where it's throwing a null pointer exception. Um, and, and where did that come from? So we got here through the scanner class, right? Uh, the scanner is used to work with um, input from potentially from the user, if you're using a console application, which is a little bit of a weird thing to do today, um, or to also load stuff from a file. But the real thing that we usually want to identify when we look at a stack trace is where, what did we do? Like, what did, how did our code get here? And actually it leads us through the sequence of calls that got us to this point. So the first thing that happened is that our, our onCreate method in our application was called because actually the onCreate method in the application class gets called even before the onCreate method in an activity. That application class that we talked about is sort of the first thing that gets set up when an Android app launches. Um, so I called this onCreate method, method. It called server.start. And then I got into here, and this called the server constructor. You see this when it says dot in it. That essentially means the constructor is running. The constructor called a method called do reset. Uh, this is part of the server. This is all in code that we gave you, and you can go through it yourself. Um, this is do reset. It tried to initialize the list of places by calling load places. And it was here in server.java that I entered, and you'll see scanner dot in it. I was trying to create an instance of a scanner and something went wrong. Now, this is an example. I mean, not every piece of Java code provides like a useful error message. In the past, we've seen places in Android where somebody went to the effort to actually provide a really useful 
uh, error message. This is not that useful, um, but by using the stack trace to understand how it happened, we are still now at the line where the problem originated. And you know, a lot of times when you're debugging, a lot of the goal is to figure out where to direct your focus, right? Where, what should you look at? You know, what should, uh, where should I be directing my, my, uh, my attention, right? What part of my code is potentially the problem? And there's a lot of ways, you know, so one of the other techniques that we use when we're debugging is we think about what did I just change, right? And of course, I know what I just changed because I did this on purpose to create this error, but you know, free, and that's why we ask you to run the test suites a lot is because if the test suites were just running and then you wrote a new line of code and then everything is broken, then it's probably the new line of code that's the problem, right? And so that's where you direct your attention. But when we have a stack trace, the stack trace is another source of information about where to direct our attention. And in this case, it leads us right to the line where there's a problem. Now, it's not telling me what the problem is. So this is just a clue, right? Like debugging is sort of like we're detectives. We have to take clues and take information about what's going on and try to you know, uh, bring them together into one place to allow us um, to, to see what the problem is, right? But I know that something went wrong on uh, when I in on this line of load places, so it's line 127. And now, if I look at this, okay, I'm creating an instance of scanner. Now, I don't necessarily entirely understand what this piece of code does. I could look it up, right? This is essentially loading a file from the resources directory of um, this particular class. But if I look at this, I look at this, I look over here, I look for that file, I look and I, I see uh, that it's called. Um, places.csv and aha, right? Just a tiny little typo. And once I fix this, if I run the MP0 test suites, I'll see that uh, there some of them are passing. Not all of them, this is the starter code, but the ones that I expected to pass, right? Okay, awesome. So that those stack traces, let me go back and put this in again so we can see what happens. Those stack traces, like when you get a stack trace, when your application fails and you get a stack trace, you know, you should really be rejoicing inside. Because you know, even though it failed and that's not good, the stack trace is just such an incredibly valuable piece of information because it gives you such a good idea of where to start looking. So what do we do with the stack trace? Okay, we read this and typically what I'll do is I'll try to find what's the last thing my code did before the problem started. And in this case, Android Studio makes it very easy for me to figure out what that is because this is the stack trace that goes, so these are the older calls, these are the newer calls. So the last thing that happened was I called this method require non null. You'll see that gets called in uh, scanner.java. Uh, I think this is a little off, right? It, it require, so you'll see uh, require not null gets called on um, the, well, this, I don't think this is the right spot. Anyway, um, the, these are, these are uh, classes that are, this is code that's provided in, in several different places, and so it's not clear that Android Studio is finding the right uh, scanner.java to look at. But anyway, at some point, scanner.java is trying to figure out if the first argument that I pass is null, and it's calling require not null so that a null pointer exception gets thrown if I try to open, if I try to have it read something that's not valid, that's a null source. And when I try to open this non existent file, that's what comes back, right? When I call get resources stream, if I pass it an invalid name, and I think actually if I hover, hover over this, right, um, basically it says um, it returns an input stream object or null if no resource with this name is found. So I'm asking it for a resource with a name that isn't found because there is no file called places.cvs. Um, so it's returning null and passing null to scanner and scanner is what blows up. But by by allowing me to find this line of my code to focus on, it allows me to zero in and get a sense of where the problem is. And that's hugely important whenever we're debugging. So if you have an exception in your code, the first thing to do is read the stack trace and figure out what's going on and use that as an input to your debugging process.